and welcome to another video. Today I'm speaking about herbalism and multiple sclerosis, specifically the herbs that can help you deal with and live with having a chronic illness. So I've decided to split this video into three parts, inflammation, pain and chronic fatigue. So inflammation, chronic fatigue and pain are basically the main parts of what it is to live with an autoimmune disease, specifically MS. Um, but I don't want to shut anyone out if you have an autoimmune disease and you would like to watch this video to get some herbal remedies, then I highly recommend staying and watching. And please stay till the end because I'm going to be sharing my absolute go-to recipe. I drink this every week. I make a huge batch in like a big mason jar and I drink it every single week and it helps me so much. I swear by plants and I swear by plant allies. They're so important to help you cope with having an autoimmune disease. I think it's just necessary to say that of course there are going to be three different categories, inflammation, pain and chronic fatigue, but most of these categories kind of interlace with one another. So for example, if you have an inflamed area, you're going to have pain in that area. Um, and so when I speak about inflammation and pain, a lot of the herbs work together. Inflammation and pain are very linked and they kind of coexist. So don't take each category as like, the be all and end all. You can mix the herbs together because obviously one symptom will kind of lead to another symptom like pain can lead to inflammation or the opposite. So my first plant ally that is a go-to for inflammation is ginger and in terms of like Ayurveda you can use ginger as a paste and put it directly on the inflamed area. So if your knee is inflamed you can make a paste with ginger and put it on the area and that really reduces inflammation. You can also start every morning with a warm cup of ginger tea. So I like to do this. I start every morning with a warm cup of ginger tea and that really helps me. My next go-to herb for inflammation is nettle. So nettle kind of leads into the chronic fatigue category because nettle is really energizing and so it helps with inflammation but it also helps you have a really solid energy function and I really swear by this like I said, I use these herbs on the daily and my infusion that I'll share with you at the end um, has a lot of nettle in it and it really helps my energy. So I highly recommend nettle for reducing inflammation but also adding to your energy levels. So the next herb that I have is turmeric. Turmeric and ginger can be used together. So like I said about the paste, you can add turmeric to that paste, um, put a little bit of black pepper in it. You can drink that, have a ginger turmeric black pepper latte, or you can add that directly to your skin. Um, the turmeric will stay in your skin yellow, but it's obviously not permanent. Um, then we have ginseng. Ginseng is amazing for inflammation and it works again with um, the chronic fatigue piece because ginseng really helps give you that energy boost and it also reduces inflammation. So ginseng is a powerhouse. I have used ginseng in my life and it is really transformational. Um, when I was younger, my dad would give me ginseng shots before ballet. It would give me such an influx of energy, but it's better than coffee because you don't have like the depletion of the energy. My next anti-inflammatory powerhouse plant is cinnamon. Cinnamon is from the bark of a tree and it's just absolutely incredible. Cinnamon is so good for reducing inflammation. You can really mix these herbs together like I already said. Ginger, turmeric, cinnamon latte would be amazing as an anti-inflammatory. And then my last anti-inflammatory is rosemary. Rosemary is such an incredible plant or herb. I absolutely love rosemary. What I do is I take the rosemary directly from the plant and I make a nice little herbal concoction, a herbal tea. I sometimes have it warm just like that, put the rosemary in my tea and drink it. Um, or you can soak it overnight and it's just really, really incredible. There are so many benefits to drinking rosemary. So yeah, I hope that you try it. Okay, so we are then going to move on to fatigue and fatigue is something that people with MS really struggle with and my heart goes out to you if you struggle with chronic fatigue. Um, I know that it can be such a challenge and I know that it's really, really sad when you wake up in the morning and you've had like 
such a long sleep and then you still don't feel energized and it's so difficult to kind of come to terms with that and to learn how to manage your energy and you definitely have to preserve your energy like a battery so you can't give a hundred percent to everything and especially if you have MS or an autoimmune disease because it is a struggle um, and so you can use these herbs and plant allies as a way for you to facilitate getting more energy into your life in a natural way that doesn't deplete that energy. Also with chronic fatigue, just remember that you must make sure that the herbs you're using don't give you a downer, a, a depletion kind of effect. Like I keep saying coffee or like matcha. You just want to be really careful. So like I would suggest having a matcha in the morning but not having it after like 3 p.m. because you will have that depletion of energy. Anything that has caffeine is not really always the best because the energy isn't, you aren't able to maintain that energy is what I'm trying to say. So getting back into the herbs that I recommend, herbs, plants, allies, I'll be using that term interchangeably. Um, so ginseng, ginseng I spoke about in the anti-inflammatory section, um, but it's also incredible for energy. Now I would use ginseng in my own life would definitely be for its energy benefits. So my next tip is green tea. Again, like I said with the matcha, have this in the morning instead of in the afternoon because you are gonna get that energy hit. Um, but it is definitely better than a cup of coffee. Again, nothing wrong with coffee. I just think it's important to be careful and to know what we're putting into our body. When you have an autoimmune disease and you suffer from chronic fatigue, you don't wanna be depleted from energy and be getting this like fake kick that some of um, that some caffeine beverages can give you. So my next tip is dandelion. Dandelion I use on the daily with nettle. Like I said, I'll show you my magical infusion that I drink every week. Um, dandelion is incredible for energy. It's also amazing for the skin. Nettle's amazing for the hair. So the two together is such a powerhouse. Yeah, dandelion is just such a magical herb flower and I highly, highly recommend using dandelion. My next tip is ashwagandha for fatigue. Ashwagandha is incredible when it comes to fatigue. It's such a powerful medicine. So we then have sage and sage is amazing because it helps with your chronic fatigue, but it also will help you improve your memory. So if you suffer from like memory loss or not being able to focus on a task while you're doing it um, and you're further fatigued, and sage is really going to help you work through that and help improve your memory and your chronic fatigue. Next plant is peppermint. Peppermint is amazing and again, it also improves memory function. So peppermint, you can make peppermint tea, you can have a peppermint essential oil. This improves fatigue and focus. So that's also really important because often when you are chronically fatigued, it's gonna be really difficult to do tasks and to focus on your tasks. I'm not really recommending essential oils and things like that. When I speak about these herbs and plants, I'm honestly saying to eat them, drink them, put them on your body directly. I'm so sorry if my camera has shifted a little bit. Um, my memory card was full, so I had to quickly delete some things mid-filming, um, but I'm back. So I was saying that I'm not recommending essential oils, mainly because you get the benefits of a plant when you're ingesting it, like in its natural form, um, through teas, through tinctures, and things like that. So when I'm speaking about using peppermint, I'm meaning the plant in its natural form. But you can use essential oils if that's something that's in your practice. But that isn't what I'm recommending within this video. So the next one is maca. So maca is incredible because it helps with athletic performance. Um, and I think that this is amazing if you struggle with chronic fatigue because you can have like a maca smoothie before you go to the gym or before you work out, which will really help you with your athletic performance and it will help boost your energy in a natural way that will be able to assist you when you go to the gym and when you work out. Because I know if you have chronic fatigue, it might be a struggle to have the motivation to exercise. Um, so it's nice to know that there are plants out there that can really help us. So my next category is pain. And I just want to really be empathetic about if you're having pain with multiple sclerosis or any autoimmune disease for that matter. It can really be debilitating and really affect your everyday life. And it can also affect your mental health. And so it's important that we take the right precautions with regards to pain. And that we kind of have like a team of things, medication, 
friends and family, herbal remedies that will help us cope with our pain on a physical level and then also on an emotional level. Um, and it's just important for me to say that because pain can be very multifaceted. And so that's why I'm really excited to speak about this herb. It is one of my favorite plants, which is St. John's wort. St. John's wort, made into an oil, applied directly to the skin can help with nerve pain. And St. John's wort, taken in tablet form or in a tea, can help with your mental health. So this is why I absolutely love St. John's wort, because it can be used to help the physical um, experience of pain, but it can also be used as a way to uplift your mood when you're experiencing depression or sadness about the pain, and also just depression and sadness in general. But because this category is specifically about pain, I'll keep it physical. Again, I'm sorry if I've shifted. My memory card is so full, even though I just deleted a whole bunch of stuff, so I had to delete more things. Um, so as I was saying, St. John's Wort is honestly one of my favorite herbs because it has the ability to help our physical um, pain and also reduce the mental suffering that comes with the experience of having an autoimmune disease. So my next herb is lavender. Lavender is amazing because if you add it to your bath, it helps increase circulation. It also reduces anxiety and helps you sleep. So if your pain is um, affecting your sleep, then lavender is a really good herb to incorporate into your everyday life. So then I also have chamomile. Chamomile is also an anti-inflammatory, so it will help with inflammation and it will also help you sleep just like the lavender. And then I have ginger. Ginger, again, is also an anti-inflammatory, um, but it can also be used to reduce pain. So when added directly to an area where there's swelling, backache, um, then the ginger can really help reduce that pain caused by inflammation. Then one of my favorite flowers is Annika. Annika has been used for centuries to help treat pain, help treat swelling, all sorts of aches and pains. So I really recommend using Arnica. So my next plant is comfrey and the leaves contain compounds that stimulate cell formation. So that's incredible. It can also be used to reduce pain and it's honestly just like a miracle plant. So then we have rosemary, which can be used um, also with regards to healing because it reduces swelling. And it's absolutely an incredible plant. It's such a powerhouse. I know that I said that it was also an anti-inflammatory and apply directly to the skin. It can be used to help treat pain and swelling. So you can apply, apply it directly to swollen areas. And there's lots of studies on rosemary and the benefits of using rosemary with pain and how much it has helped people really reduce their swelling when applied directly to the skin. So that's basically all the herbs that I use in my daily life. And I hope that you find a herb that works for you, especially in one of the three categories. There's a lot of different herbs that you can use. And I highly recommend using herbal medicine as a way for you to facilitate your healing with multiple sclerosis or any autoimmune disease, like I already said. Herbs are absolutely amazing. People have been using them for centuries and they work wonders. So now I'm going to take you down to the kitchen where I'm going to show you my favorite herbal remedy that I use every single week. I make a massive batch um, and yeah. So over here we have my amazing herbal remedy. I am so excited to speak about this herbal remedy. So as you can see, I fill like a really big jar. And I typically drink one of these a week. It really helps with my energy levels and it helps with honestly just everything related to MS. So one thing to note is that a herbal infusion is different to a tea because the herbs are steeped for a long time. So typically 8 to 12 hours to honestly like this a week. So in this particular infusion is dandelion, nettle, rooibos and raspberry leaf um, and this is just such an amazing infusion for energy levels and for keeping inflammation down. When I pour it into a glass I add some cinnamon or some turmeric I just add some more like anti-inflammatory benefits um, but I specifically use this for my energy levels which is why I put a lot of nettle and a lot of dandelion 
in this infusion. I don't really measure, I probably add about a tablespoon, two tablespoons, three tablespoons, depending on how much nettle and dandelion I have on hand. Um, so there we go, this is basically the infusion that I drink. So there we have it, this is my famous herbal infusion that I absolutely love to drink. You can play with the different herbs that I mentioned in this video and you can create your own herbal infusion. Basically, the only thing that you need to be aware of is that you need to soak the herbs for a really long time to have a herbal infusion. And if you just want to drink it as a tea, then just follow your normal herbal tea um, recipes and you can apply that to the specific herbs that you're using. As always, check in with a healthcare provider or a naturopath or someone who is very skilled with herbal medicine. If you have any queries or questions, then yeah, I suggest just checking in with someone who knows your medical history and so that you can just make informed decisions about the kind of herbs that you're using and whether they work with the medication that you're already on. So these herbs work for me in my life but they might not work for you in your life. And I think it's important that we just make our own decisions for our own bodies. And we all do what's best for ourselves. This is basically just me sharing what works for me. If it doesn't work for you, that's perfectly fine. And yeah, I upload videos every week. So I hope that you stick around and watch some more of them. And I'm sending you lots of love wherever you are in this world. Thank you so much for watching this video.